Flower of Life and Fito 5. A geometric pattern of evenly spaced repeating overlap. Resembling a mandala, it's a sacred geometry blueprint representing the primordial desire for completion and unity of self. For this reason, Fito 5 adopted the Flower of Life to graphically depict the quantum nature of its five elemental lines of skincare. Like the tangible flower, the Flower of Life blooms too, radiating the first vibratory patterns of the universe, showing us that all things emerge from one perfectly organized pattern. The geometric pattern of the Flower of Life represents the essential concept of quantum physics. Beto 5's energetic five element lines vibrate with a potency that registers in the quantum range of frequency. The Flower of Life is used as a focus both for study and meditation, but it should not only be viewed as a thing outside of and separate from ourselves. Follow for more or gain insight to add energy medicine to your healing practice. Go ahead and visit tanyad.tv forward slash fido hyphen five or email info at tanyad.tv and I will see you on the other side. Ashe, ashe, ashe. Blessings to you, my energetic being. And whoopsie, <laughs> look at me. Oh my gosh, and I didn't even do that. It's a tantalizing Thursday, inshallah, and Ashe. Blessings to you, my energetic beings. The emotional intensity of the day might be overly strong, leaving the webs of being emotionally aware, kind of like hyper aware in the fields, but the emotional field, the astral field, and all the things in the in-between. It's just a combining energy with the sun shining in all areas, initiating an action, uh, choreographing these emotions as they're bubbling to the surface, the intensity of the field. I would say look or go inward, a place to solicit our inner solitude, dear seer and oracle. So while we're waiting for people to hop on to the live stream, listen to the replay, taking a moment for a pause and a breath. This really has been a week in review, right? A life in review. Getting to the root of a feeling. Previously, you may not have been able to feel them. Allowing healing to happen. Be kind. Be encouraging. Be courageous. As you're kind of feeling them each with authentic truth. And the energy of the day. Mars is not quite leaving the season of the mind, the solar plexus. It has been there for it feels like. A timeline quite honestly but it is at the degree of taking an action or an initiation with feeling and how do we feel about the action that we are about to initiate and just being mindful of our feelings and our actions being mindful of those as well and in doing so we then come to a place of being in authenticity being in integrity within our action state of awareness as our mind is choreographing what this initiation looks like and to take that action with more of a feeling. So feelings literally are the key ingredient for the transformation on a day like today. So I would definitely journal, especially take notes of all the things happening because what we believe is also moving to a new energy within the season of Aries. So an action to take that excels our gift, our purpose, who we are in alignment with our heart and our spirit. We're doing this choreography. So it's like, are we able to commit to the star that we are, our star story, our gift, our purpose, our prime directive? Spirit truly is initiating this transformation. And then to top it off, I mean, it's not on every energy channel or astrology channel, right? So super exciting. It truly is a tantalizing Thursday. I created this. And I'll get to the reason why I chose this image, by the way. But Pluto moving into Aquarius for first shedding its skin. We are all, you know, are you in your soul, in your body, in your inner genius, being service to who we authentically are, securing this transformation, this authenticity, this change, this shift within ourselves, And the world is also becoming who they are authentically. So we're in this major transformation in alignment. There's so many energies happening. It's like, holy shifts, Batman. We're going to experience this energy five times during this dance by the end of 2024 before it literally holds space. So really taking note and journaling. The universe is really highlighting for us to be really authentic, to be our inner genius. So be resonating. Whatever's resonating and streaming, it's absolute light of all the things, energy, frequency, vibration, 
coming from the heavenly realm and literally going down to the depths of Pluto, the tree of life. Um, so it's excelling, it's vibrating to the beyond imagination, beyond possibilities, quantum field of the imaginal realm. So if you're able to see or tune into your natal chart, your astrology chart, where this is all happening for you, where this is all playing out, this is where this awareness is choreographing the story. So this area is going to be going through these quantum gates of transformation, transmutating for, I think, about 20 years, honestly. So it's time to set the stage. And you probably already have been actually setting a new scene, creating more authenticity, because that's the season of the year anyway, the season of the witches, freedom, innovation, excelling, igniting. But you got to go to the depths some otherworldly technologies. Maybe your telepathy gets heightened, your connection to the divine, the spirit realm, ancestors. And this veil, this energy is like pure. It's the absolute white of light. We can also, if you want, we can also be in or around the round table. So what are we mindful of or what can we commit to? That's going to really kind of boost this energy. And our fears often might be initiating or activating our thoughts where we go down the rabbit hole. We're not following the white rabbit, we're following the black rabbit. But not only are we going to be tested kind of mouth to mind, but also the deepest cores of ideas and learning and understanding. It might just pop our top with this innovation. Deep inner ethics, moral integrity, aligning, transforming, a deep knowing, deep ideas, producing who we are, and are we being authentic to who we are? I really love the idea. The I just love the idea beyond the traditional love story, if you will, facing our fears so we can be authentic. We can see them all clearly for what they are, the shadows. I'm actually going to be a guest April 27th, I believe. I'll, I'll share the link for that. I can't remember. It's remembering. It's a 10-day immersion with uh, Juliana Whitlow. She's been one of my podcast guests, but uh, just the shadows, you know, it really is all false evidence appearing real. And we kind of create a choreography in our mind, right? To rip the rug out from under our feet, but our heart is really feeling or revealing and reveling in the feelings for more self-filling awareness. The shadows are dissipating, they're clearing. As more doors are opening, more opportunities uh, to make those choices that are of a higher elevation. So it's kind of like consulting those inner aspects. I really feel like it's the childlike wonder first inside of us by going down deep into the inner child, maybe introducing or including that wonder, how children are just in the eyes of the wonder. We may even have the potential to build something that really lasts infinity and beyond. It reminds me of Buzz Lightyear. Maybe we're going to start being in our own spacesuits, flying around the earth. I don't know. But just allow what you feel to kind of instigate, feeling the inspiration for any and all of these possibilities and transformations, kind of like putting your mind where your mouth is, or maybe like watching out for what you wish for in all actuality. But with that, welcome to The Daily Snippet. Once again, I am your host. I'm a practicing holistic shaman medium, another worldly life coach, and a subtle energetic surgeon, a reflector by design, which I've known for actually... 15 years, but I do go by the term holistic Shaw medium, which is just emerging a choreography of them all. And my intention is to utilize or bring in the indigenous technologies, the elemental beings, the imaginal realms, our original divine blueprint, our soul's harmonic, if you will, navigating through those realms, dimensions and portals and all the things beyond the gateways and the cosmos, honestly, with offerings, prescriptions and ritual. I'm going to be doing the dance with that later today. The otherworldly kind to really add to the juice of our main stage container. I really feel like the veil is so thin right now. Uh, rituals, doing a ritual for the origin, food for our soul, our personal medicine, our gift and purpose, our prime directive. It's like we're coming into our own starlight right now so that our light does shine ever so bright. My name is Tanya D, and welcome to my virtual medicine room. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channels, please do YouTube or my Musing with Tanya D podcast, or actually any of my offerings, subscribe there. I'm pretty quite hilarious. Uh, the season of Aries, who am I inside of me? Those are questions we should be asking ourselves. How does the outside world see us? Uh, so... Before I go any further, let's give a shout out to the new peeps entering the village, the community. 
I always like to give a voice of acknowledgement, of validation that I do see you. Whether you stick to my show or not, I'm just appreciative. New friends and guests, new subscribers. So again, thank you for that. And of course, those of you that do um, or have been part of my journey since the beginning, and also those that do tune in to the replay a little later when it's convenient, I appreciate that. It really does take a village, a tribe, uh, a gratitude, a blessing bowl, if you will, which mine's on my desk. I should probably move things around. Um, and also, if you don't mind, of course, hitting the bell button so you're notified along with the white rabbit, the white button. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. And a comment if you feel like you're in need of a message for your day. Sharing is just another way of paying it forward, being in our authenticity. And of course, you could also find me on other social channels, TikTok, Facebook, and actually Amazon. I just uploaded my podcast there. Just remember, I'm your otherworldly shamanic reflecting assistant. You truly are your own healer, but sometimes we get in our own way and we need another worldly life coach to assist us. Myself included, by the way, right? Um, things happen for us, not to us. And the daily snippet. What do I muse about here? The cosmic insights. I love the planets. I love the galaxy. I think there's so much juice out there. And by design, I do follow the lunar energies, the moon through the seasons, along with the gates. I think there's something percolating there. But the moon navigating through the season of Aries, our root channel, it's the feeling, the physicality, the physical empathy, rooting our intentions, our manifestations, moving into the season of manifesting our emotional foundation, which is Taurus, a very different moon moving through this season, the inner child, the elementals, the four pillars, um, brought in the hour of Pluto moving into Aquarius today, so hang on till later. And also I do do a mystery guest on Sundays about the four pillars with the mystery guest, kind of fun. And the subtle energies, the chakras, the energetic centers, different ones get highlighted in different seasons and during the seasons, other ones are elevated. Along with our auric fields, our astral field is a little more percolating right now, along with our root center, but we've entered the season of Aries, the corridor of upgrading who we are, our physicality, our character. I think of all the signs, Aries are very, um, they're muscular, it's wood energy. Like I can just see, they build muscle easy. They're physically fit, you know, plans of action. Even sometimes defensive in their posture. My son's an Aries, born on the spring equinox, go figure. But our inner posture, the inner imagery or our outer imagery, how we see the world outside of us uh, or how the world outside of us sees us, reflects or shines back to us, appearing anew. So it's this can-do energy. It makes things happen. Like no fear, actually. That's kind of how I see an Aries is having no fear. It's the sports dad, the hero dad. So it's this energy of action creating manifestation. So what energetically is encoded biologically? I would see down to our divine codex, even ancestrally, down into the earth star, the vibe axis. I mean, with the root intention of seriously survival. It's the part of us that's activated, this is great, in the womb, the waters of the moon, the womb and the waters of the womb. So what was the frequency, ask yourselves, of words while in the waters of the womb, in the moon? Like what was happening for us when we're in the moon? So this is happening for us again, or it's kind of beginning while in the womb up to six months when we're in the womb. Uh, I would even say up to our first year of arrival into the earth plane, and then our sacral activates or comes online, along with the earth star. So you may want to wish to reflect on this time in your life when you're in the womb state, if you will. What was the emotional field of your mom, the environment she was in, what was going through? Because you're kind of part of those codes, the seed codes, just a thought, just something to amuse about there. Um, asking ourselves, who am I? Who am I to become? Or what is my gift? What is my purpose? So we do have the root center, the heart shining light upon our heart, bringing in the moon, the sacral, the emotional field, and our feelings, our heart field, the field of safety, security, survival, just choreographing or doing this dance. It's synchronizing with our shaman's portal, the Akashic records, the shadow records. Who am I there or who was I there? You may find your root center to be more emotional today, sacred emotional survival in those waters. So grounding, grounding is truly the energy, honestly, of the season of Aries. Grounding into an element that brings the ingredient of being safe, 
feeling safe, security, and also physically manifesting. It's a manifesting energy as well. It's an activating energy. That's why fast food restaurants have red to call in that action energy. So an action that we're able to initiate through our heart space. And just remember, I've said this several times, the sun shines upon everything, right? It's the shining starlight that goes around the earth plane. It shines in all the darkest places, to the crevices, even to the balancing, the opening up to receive an invitation. So it's like, are we ready to allow these aspects of childlike wonder to be put out into the open, to be like a child, to feel the purest of the purest of absolute light connected to the universe, feelings that have possibly been under the rug for so long and the shadow records percolating, unvalidated, repressed, ignored, denied, the river of denial, all of that might become bursting out a volcanic eruption, forward, direct, blunt, fire, right? Fire forges. So being in the season of Aries, the warrior, it comes out expressing these aspects in true warrior form, actions, behaviors, characters. Feelings may be triggered, possibly defensive. I would literally put up a shield. Possibly you're angry. Maybe you're more aggressive. So all of this energy has been bottled up. Now it's like erupting. So this emotional energy is all happening within us. You might even feel like I had a dream vision, of course. Like your bones are rattling to the core, percolating inside. So if you're able to be aware of this emotional alert signals, the warnings that your field is giving off, taking the time, giving space to the inner child, the womb, childlike wonder, nurturing those aspects of ourselves through this entire experience. Myself, I prefer to be a hermit or go to the beings of the other world in kind. I did my uh, Paul Santo this morning. Still smells good. But some of us need to express and reach out to somebody, talk things out, sort through our feelers, go out into nature for a journey, connect with the beings of nature, all aspects of nature, so much goodness out there. Ritual, journaling, self-soothing, calming waters, go to the waters, do offerings to the beings and the water spirits because this probably is feeling a little intangible, I would say, or so out there. <laughs> So feeding the fish, talking to them, and the other spirits in the water of the little sprites. So as we are recalibrating this aspect of who we are inside of ourselves, coming to this corridor, this round table, this sphere, the joy molecules of our feelings, growing and healing them, and responding to our feelings with kindness of all the things to be, how are or do you treat yourselves, your feeling self, this is all in transformation, negating, not um, not negating, I would say affirming or changing and shifting. Instead of shitting on ourselves, we should be shifting ourselves, cleansing the chalice, the sacral predominantly, and often we block our feelings. We deny that they even exist. So maybe you are feeling this undeniable energy of acknowledging how you authentically feel and why you have been denying the water to flow. They're like dammed up. And honestly, it's time to heal them. Go to those waters, going inward, seeing your childlike self, third person omnipresent, like literally climb out of your physical body, not all the way, and have your spirit look down at your childlike wonder self. And what is... Sorry, I've got a mess on my desk. What is your heartfelt motive with your feelings? Are they choreographing a story? What is denying, you know, are you denying them for yourself? So really just imagining going inward, your mind's eye, your feeling center possibly, and looking inward, being the parent to your childlike self, or even to your parents, being a parent to the parent. My dad lives with me, that's why I said that. So is there something you might do differently to acknowledge or respond to your inner self, this inner childlike wonder and curiosity, being calm, being soothing, being kind in this watery womb? Just fine tuning this inner responder, the circuitry to what we feel and the heart then pours this absolute love to the expression that's been denied, offering those streams of healing. So super exciting. Uh, just a few announcements. 
tune into this week's episode of Musing with Tanya D podcast. I have a new one out today. Luciano, no, Luciana. Sorry about that. Passery. Great website, by the way. She's got some great shoes. But the podcast is titled God's in a Box. Oh, and honestly, great interview. I believe I'll be heading to Peru soon. Great conversation. She just launched her book. It's titled God's in a Box on my dresser, plus the shoes, the indigenous shoes. I've got the links on my website for that, but they're design crafted and very well worth it. Couldn't decide which ones I wanted, quite honestly. They're so nice. And also the four pillars. Um, mystery guest on Sundays, Rising of the Origins, a private group, if you're interested. And I'm relaunching the beta for A Witcher's Way to Manifest. I'm going to be choreographing a link for that as well. It's an opportunity to join me for an introduction or introducing it. And of course, we still have the Mongolian adventure, the indigenous souls who wish to travel to the land and some medicine people, a village, a tribe, a community. Um, so lots of stuff happening. And then sometimes I feel like nothing's happening. So that's kind of my story. It's the all or nothing. It's a topsy turvet as usual. But... Here we got these elementals. Oh, I guess I could have centered that a little better. But I did think it would be fun to bring in the hour of Pluto. When Pluto entered Aquarius, doing a dance here. It's kind of ping pong-ish looking. But the day master, our day master is a young metal day being unrefined and courageous. Having courage, uh, outer world courage. And the dragon, the metal dragon, young earth, a dragon made of stones or crystals. So, because it's a, it's a white dragon is why I'm saying that. And the hour, the hour is young earth with a tiger. So we have lots of nature. Our day isn't grounded or rooted. There's no hidden elements or elements in storage for the metal, which is willpower. It's our beliefs. It's like, are we using our will and showing up? Are we setting higher standards and intentions and integrity? And the dragon and the hour are in support of our day, supporting and offering us resources, guidance, uh, deep earth, lots of yin wood as well, wood in general, actually. Wealth is rooted, the yin water of the year is in storage in the dragon. Oh, not, yeah, the dragon. <laughs> I was thinking of the hour. So we do have water, emotions that may birth or come out. We also have an entire wood direction with the dragon and the tiger and the rabbits, which I noticed. Um, so nature, nature is alive, it's birthing. Bringing us assets, money, creativity, abundance, ideas coming in from the east. I'd probably open the eastern windows to allow the air to flow in, which is part of metal. A little round on the edges, if you will. Um, but this is a day of uh, prosperity. Yin and yang are pretty much balanced between all the elementals here. But we also have the yang earth in storage in the tiger. So fire, fire would be the element. The realm of spirit, source, dreams, visions, divine connection. I think I said spirit, being charismatic, bring out your starlight, fire bursts more earth, which houses the metal. Community would be a great idea. Humanity, society, especially with Pluto and Aquarius, writing, technology, revolutionary, innovative new ideas, our inner genius percolating, inner kindness, inner peace, courage, contemplation, spiritual compliment contemplation even. So it's like, where do I belong in this futuristic world that's birthing anew? Crystals. Crystals may also be a great idea. Light crystals more than stones. I'm thinking like celestite, selenite, um, crystals, pure crystals. Yeah. Meditation, prayer, invoking spirit, ancestors, fire, uh, divine communication. But whatever it is, be loving to all aspects of who you are today, excelling how we treat ourselves, Feelings of childlike wonder and curiosity. How do you feel about yourself as a person? And what is the ego response to that feeling? You know, are you nervous? Are you shaky? Are you loving it? Just kind of be an observership of how you feel. What's the instinct, the gut sensation, the solar plexus, the signal? Do you resist the feeling that comes or do you open the door to it? Are you in support of it? Do you dismiss them as if they don't even exist? Sometimes, you know, my moon's in Scorpio and sometimes those, <laughs> they're so deep, those emotional fields. But the intention is to be in soul support of what we feel in the emotional field, the astral for all that it is, and being in these absolute streams of light and being optimistic, I would say like mystical, optimistical, 
validating emotions in kind. Just knowing that we are universally cared for, a great spirit, connection, faith. Um, I'm in or holding the line. I go to my faith chambers all the time, knowing it's perfectly okay to feel any way that we do. The soul expression. So the message today, I actually, if you listened on Monday, I did have a card for today. That's kind of what I've been doing. But the message for today comes from Fast the Footer. I like this little guy. He's part of the fairy challengers, bringing us face to face with our fears. Apparently, they're emotional ones. Uh, emotional traumas, maybe denial, insecurity, delusion. It's in the emotional field, though, because today we've got the moon online. But this is a test more than um, an initiation in a way, actually. Not kind of the test that we got in school. These are like the memos, getting the memo, testing if we're feeling the awareness, feeling the insight, feeling the knowledge, the wisdom, even feeling our own personal growth, feeling the waters, and offering us these challenges, that are we're designed to pass them. We're just learning things at a higher level, probably faster than our ancestors. I think of my grandma all the time who's lived through, like she's almost 100 years, you know. You can't make this stuff up. And the 58, being mindful of our divine commitment today and our divine feelings. Are we committed to a higher level of being? Are we acting on this character? Are we in alignment with it? Which brings back to Solace, the card yesterday, the 13. What do we believe in our heart? What is the revolutionary change we're going through? What are we transmuting? What are we transforming? And also Pluto moving into Aquarius. All three days added up to a four. Not sure you're aware of that, but I find that pretty curious. And we also have Mercury dancing with Saturn kind of energy, Saturnian energy along with Venus. So it's like we're limiting ourselves to what we're committing to open up to receive. Are we holding back on said words or options? Are we watch, watching or witnessing, even Jupiter? What we believe is that the Saturn energy, which brings me to Saturn in Pisces. So it's this huge choreography going on in the cosmic highway. But this little character is about being real. He's about being earthing, grounding, centering, which is so funny because Uranus is so otherworldly and out of this world, right? So just as life becomes surprisingly interesting, possibly more exciting than we're used to, surprise, the element of surprise, though not necessarily fun often. But Thaf, the foot fungus fairy, that's kind of his name, he comes to check out our feet picking up one foot at a time and looking them over, checking for dirt or looking between our toes, checking out our toenails. And if he finds that we've been neglecting our feet, uh, disrespecting the earth mama, the earth plane, our earth journey, he marks them up. He puts holes in our socks. And if things are super bad, he sends these little earthly critters like spiders and ants and whatnot into our shoes. So it's kind of a message to get out in nature in our birthday suit, barefoot, connecting to the earth, snow and all. Reminds me of Wim Hof, if you watched him, jumping into the waters, taking cold showers. It's pretty curious. I've started doing that. But just bringing spirit to the soul under the moon, the night sky. It's this message to get outside, feet up in the air, and just doing the dance. It's a very ungrounded kind of energy, so kind of sending a balloon up, pulling us back down to the earth with the balloon. It's kind of a some urgency here, sometimes difficult or impossible or it might feel that way to really connect to the earth or make contact because we're floating off on our own. Maybe we're in our personal cosmic float bubble, kind of feeling that a little bit. So it's kind of wise. It's a wise choice to bring ourselves down to the earth plane, creature comforts, Climbing into our skin, being embodied and grabbing hold of the earth. It's kind of a message also to still learn how to fly, but do so kind of navigating the airwaves. So you might also speak to those who draw their energy from others rather than from source. You know, people can steal our light source. The song of ecstasies, having lost awareness of this fundamental earthly connection. But it's also an awareness that we may have even lost ourselves, a sense of ourselves, an essence in our entirety. It's like, holy shift. Maybe we are seeing ourselves as much less than we ever are. But being that this day, um, this message arrived on this day, Pluto entering the frequency vibration energy, you know, Pluto's the underground and the moon's moving to Taurus. So we've got this transformative power of the fairy realm turning, turning the muddle 
the cosmic blah, debris into magic and alchemizing the young metal forged into shining gold with spirit. So dark despair into crystalline joy. It reminds me of crystal gritting. As life is growing, something's birthing out of the darkness. Pluto, right? Some things grow that are great. Great growth happens, not even in the bad, right? Foot fungus, I guess. But I would really affirm whatever comes to you today that's life affirming, life creating, life innovating. The future is going to be something or possibly somewhat surprising and yet so fulfilling with childlike wonder. Now, the Witcher's Way to Manifestation. I'm going to open this up, the wait list, on my homepage, but I'm going to share the wait list here as well. I got to get that. It's about monetizing our medicine. The Witcher's Way to Manifest. Uh, where did I get the name? I did a poll. That's how the title came up. Uh, so it's just about monetizing our personal medicine, our gift and our purpose. And it's just the simplest way to manifest. So energetically, it's like, what's the block first? What's the subtle bodies? And then are we loving what we're doing, we're creating? And what do we feel about it? And then what do we believe about it? So the sphere of our foundation is shifting. Pluto to Aquarius. That is our sphere. The groundedness of our sphere. So if you're in the fog and you're not manifesting your soul's desires through your heart, I would actually tell you to join this wait list because the journey begins setting this foundation. I'm going to assist you. I'm going to help you navigate the storm. Take it by storm, I guess. And you're going to you're going to do your own magic. But when a Virgo believes, that's when a Virgo manifests. So if there's any Virgos tuning in and I'm talking about your rising sign, and also, if you're ready to monetize your medicine, um, join me for A Witcher's Way to Manifest. I will have the wait list for this round. Just setting, again, the energetic foundation and cleansing the spheres first, the auric fields. Those are kind of things to address. So with that, I will see you on the other side. <laughs> if not, at least tomorrow. But really make it a mystical, magical, innovative feeling, feels kind of day. And just open the doors to a new way of being, a new way of feeling, actually. And Ashe, blessings. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. The a priori thing. It was the most important thing. Here's how you need to believe. Here's what you believe. Here's what's going to get you into heaven. Here's what's going to send you to hell. And all of those sorts of things. And I have no problem with dogma. And I'm actually grateful for the scaffolding religion gave me, but kind of to answer your question in a little longer way is what I found through my investigations is that as good as dogma can be, it can be a barrier to us thriving spiritually and then thriving in this world. Because when we use so many people use dogma to define their relationship with spirit or with God. And then when we do that, right, you know, comes from an external source. And <laughs> that just makes no sense in the world of spirit.